What's going on, everybody? My name's Tyler. This is Sean. We're Rendered Reality, and thanks for joining us on this extremely exciting episode of Coffee and VR coming at you right now. going on everybody happy saturday to everyone uh this is an episode that we have been very excited about because uh if you watch our episode a couple weeks back we talked a lot about the links r1 and this has been a mm -hmm. project that we have been keeping an eye on for a long time we've been watching all the streams all the updates about this uh product and today we have the uh the ceo of the company of links and uh his name is stan and he, he is here to answer a bunch of questions talk to us all about this headset uh why don't you introduce yourself a little bit and give us just a quick rundown of what the links r1 is for people that may not know yet yeah thank you hi guys it's uh it's a great pleasure to to discuss with you today i'm stan larocchi i'm the ceo of links uh, we are essentially doing uh we are manufacturing uh, in the process of manufacturing a head-mounted display for both VR and AR, you know, like a fully mixed reality headset untethered using the latest Qualcomm XR2, along with, you know, it's packed with very cool technologies sure. from hand tracking to uh, remote rendering. Uh, and we are uh, doing a Kickstarter event in uh, September to help us launch that device on the market. And uh, I stumbled upon your last stream and you were talking about it. So I contacted you and today we, we can discuss all that together with the community. So I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Definitely. We're, yeah. we're, we're very happy to have you. <laughs> go ahead, Tyler. And I, I will say, please, everybody go down in the description, go to their website and sign up for the Kickstarter. Uh, you can put your email oh, in too. Yeah. I'm going to get notified for that. You know, the, the, the website we have right now, I, uh, I did it myself, actually. I, I was the one do, doing that. It's a simple HTML uh, page where we basically describe what, where we're heading uh, to now. And, uh, you know, we didn't expect much, but thousands of people already <laughs> signed up to this new letter. And it's like basically a sim simple script, you know, writing to a file, all the emails. And that, that file is very big now. Huge. So I switched to a, to, to a new methodology. But uh, yeah, thanks for the support. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And, one one and thing I was going to mention. The myth, the man, the legend. I just want to say this. He is my idol. Uh, <laughs> he is, is, my he is. He is. That is true. Uh, I was fanboying before and I, I told myself I'd stop. So <laughs> Tyler's going to try not to fanboy too yeah. much this episode. Right. But uh, one of the things that we talked about on the a previous episode when we got into this is the fact that uh, more recently you guys have made a shift. Uh, from being a consumer or, or to to being a consumer focused headset instead of an enterprise where that was the original uh, thought process and design originally going in, what was some of that process that made you guys decide like, hey, let's go more after the consumer based market now instead of the enterprise market? Yeah, it's 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 a you know the main question people are asking me these days, and you know once again to be very transparent with you, what happened is that. We we are still doing enterprise. We're we we're still addressing uh, businesses with, with our headsets. Uh, it's just that we're uh, also going on the consumer market, and uh, the, the price for the consumer will be very low compared to what we we did for uh, businesses when we started uh, communicating. The thing that happened, like many things happen in this ecosystem, and. Uh, you know, spatial computing is moving very fast. You know, it's a market that is being consolidated, like the big ones are buying the small ones. And mm -hmm. you will see many uh, hardware and software offering in, in the next two to three years. And um, what I saw, so I tried to raise money at the beginning of the year uh, in France and in the US for, for links, you know, for this enterprise product. And <clears throat> a lot of uh, financial people told me, well, you have to you have to prove us that there is traction that you know like people are really wanting that that headset, 
And me and my team were convinced that we're doing the, the right thing, but it's our first product. So it's hard to put real numbers in front of that, you know, and, mm -hmm. and you need a lot of capital to, to get to manufacturing. So we cannot produce the headset, you know, s selling the headset before producing it. So it was like the, you know, the, the, the snail that it's his own tail and, and, I, I had a, a hard time dealing with that. Uh, I was helped by uh, many people. Uh, I know people told me about Palmer. Yes, Palmer has been helping me uh, a lot. Uh, he's uh, very friendly. He was helping me for the US side of things. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that was like two to three months ago. And then I got back to France and I saw this, I saw uh, beginning of June, this, uh, you know, this news that, everyone in the community so that Facebook will start to do uh, ads uh, on their platform. Right. And, and you know, you, no one can be shocked, you know, because from day one, when they bought Oculus, it was, it was coming, right? And, mm -hmm. and, you know, that news plus the fact that the enterprise uh, version of Lynx might not be the, the most compelling uh, path for a sustainable company in, in this space. I, I just said, you know, to, to myself and, and to my team, you know, like, you know what, guys, fuck that. We can't let these guys do that on one side and have a hard time doing a, an enterprise only uh, headset. And our headset is quite similar in functionalities to, uh, uh, you know, anti-effort VR headset. Plus it's doing uh, some uh, other stuff on, for AR, of course, but uh, we 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 work with our partners, with like the manufacturing company, with some of the uh, companies we are working with on the software side. You know, like for example, hand tracking, or it's it's coming from Illtrip. We work on the licensing of all that, and we we arrived at a price that is very 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 compelling for customers. So I'm not going to say the price today, but I can tell you. It's not the same price as the Quest, but it's something close to what the Quest would be if they didn't sell at a loss. And I'm not going to say anything else, mm -hmm. but right. it's it's pretty low. It's, it's gonna it's gonna it's get not, it's gonna get yeah. close to around that range. I mean, and that's one of the the great things about uh, the fact that we even mentioned this as potentially being some kind of a Quest competitor because Absolutely. we we see other headsets come into this space using very similar hardware, very similar technology, but they're very very expensive. And the mainstream yeah. consumer, you know, maybe the, maybe there's some VR enthusiasts that are gonna spend that kind of money on that tech, right. but for the mainstream VR consumer, they're not. That's not obtainable to them. So this headset, even yeah. though we don't know the official price, I mean, I know when you said in your in your last live stream, you mentioned the word a few hundred dollars, like around that range. Yeah. Uh, and, and so even just that wording can, can tell us, you know, that this is going to be a, a headset that is going to be affordable for consumers and not. And the thing is, is just like you said, Facebook can afford to sell a headset at a loss because they're, they're going to make a lot of revenue through, uh, you know, gaming through ads and stuff like that down the road. And financial backing. And, yeah. I mean, the they have a lot of money. So, yep. so to be able to be a company like yours, you know, a, a smaller company that's going to be able to sell this headset with similar technology and even actually some advanced technology, if you ask me, uh, for a competitive price tag around there is that, that has me so excited. That, that's just what. Yeah. And, and, you know, to, to be, to, to get into more details about that, I don't intend, I, I wanted to make the headset affordable, but my name is not Facebook, you know, right. and you know, it's the, the, you know, Mark Zuckerberg said that VR is, you know, VR is my thing. And he, he puts his bill on the table. I, I don't have that. I can't do that. But I wanted to make it to make my headset as affordable as possible. So we built Lynx as a brand for enterprise for the last two years or um, almost. Mm -hmm. uh, and and we are going to have a lot of business customers as well. And, and, and they are going to pay a little bit more because they will have support and other right. things that would call them with the enterprise edition. And we'll do our margin on that side of the company. Because sure. I want the businesses to pay for, you know, making the consumer headset affordable, and and yeah. that's the, the the you know one of the bets we're we're making, and uh, I, I believe it will it will uh, work. We are also discussing with 
a lot of people in the AR and VR ecosystem to, to make it work because you don't just need a hardware, you need a platform. Right. So you need to build a store, you need to be compatible with a lot of things, including controllers and all that. And and then we are working on all these things. We are discussing with many people. And so what I intend to do is to unveil the price as well as the demos we are working on right now uh, in August. Nice. So uh, I'm up. targeting, we're, we're targeting mm -hmm. third week of August for a very big demo like that will show the full spectrum of the device, you know, like in, in, in just a few minutes, you will see VR, AR, hand tracking, six stuff, uh, all that running at once uh, for a consumer, uh, you know, use case. And, uh, and along with that, we're going to share the price. So it's going to be a very big news, I think. And uh, it will be right before the Kickstarter. Uh, so yeah, this is this is why we are keeping some of the news, like the, the partnership we have, like behind the curtains and all that, uh, for for this period. Uh, because in August, you know, people tend to forget everything uh, before right. uh, September. Sure. So, yeah. So I think for me, like some takeaways too that I even, you know, because you you're so transparent as a company. You know, every everything you do is put out there. Um, you don't hide anything. Uh, no problem coming on live and talking about things. Um, and I know you've mentioned even like being able to, you know, you use Leap, which, you know, I know you have worked with Leap for a long time um, for a lot of your tracking and stuff. Um, and, and you've mentioned that you've been able to see even your feet and stuff uh, inside. So is that actually a thing we may be seeing um, is like feet tracking or at least positional tracking or so is that we we so we'll have hand tracking with the ultra leap hand tracking technology mm -hmm. and uh and for that we have uh you know cameras that are very similar to to what they're using today the the hardware they distribute uh, 170 degrees camera tilted 10 degrees uh, downwards for uh, some other use case but we are also using the six dove cameras to do uh stereo you know 3d reconstruction so from from that you can uh, you can extract uh, depth from what you're seeing. So we, we, we can detect depth and we can do visual analysis, analysis. So depending on your use case, you can track pretty much everything in front of you. And uh, we are we, we will work, you know, uh, we are going to work more and more on the application space than in the hardware uh, space. Uh, be, because right now we are very focused on the hardware and like the platform, mm -hmm. but we are going to work also uh, in, in you know in Q4 on the multiplayer multiplayer you know multiplayer six dove uh, body segmentation avatar stuff all that and uh, maybe maybe foot tracking would be would, would be in it you know what's awesome. very compelling with a headset like that is that you can be in a VR scene but having your own body uh, mm -hmm. in, in this VR you know like, like the AR part Transpose. of the, of the thing is your body so you can have a, a a good level of proprioception in a virtual environment sometimes it's not needed because you're uh, you know a different creator than a right. human maybe but sometimes it's very it can be very useful uh, wow, yeah. so yeah yeah and one thing we should mention too with this product i mean this is going to be a full vr ar device mm -hmm. kind of one of the firsts in this in this space uh, to probably hit the market. And this is going to have color pass through. So, so one yeah. thing that, you know, we see with the quest two and stuff, you know, they're dabbling in some AR stuff now and enabling some stuff for developers, but th that's still a black and white pass through with pretty low resolution cameras. So this is going to be on another level when it comes to the AR space. And this is something me and Tyler have talked about for a long time about this is where yeah. AR really needs to start. AR needs to start in this space of a VR headset doing AR through VR. That's where things need to start instead of, you know, just a full AR headset that they've obviously been struggling to really perfect for a long time. I know you guys have both uh, used HoloLens and stuff like that. And there's definitely some limitations when it comes to some of that stuff. But this is a product that I think is going to do both uh, very well. And one thing that we did have a question about is uh, one of the earlier models you showed actually had uh, the blinders on the headset. So it had like, yeah. it was more like a VR headset, not as open. Is that still something right. that you're working towards or is it going to be like this rendering here that is going to be more of an open? Uh, oh yeah, I, I can tell you more about that. Uh, you know, the, I completely for, forget to talk about the cover on the last uh, live. And I asked my uh, industrial designers to only do the renders for 
showing that as an AR headset. But okay. the, the, you know, the more we progress with uh, the consumer market, the more we 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 need to put that cover back on some of the images we're we're sharing. Uh, it's still something, you know, it will be uh, fixed with magnets on the headset. I'm going to show it uh, next Thursday on the on the live we we have uh, scheduled. Um, it's going to be very comfortable and there will be one for uh, people that wear glasses and one for uh, regular uh, yeah. users. So here's, um, here's an older rendering I have up here yeah. now. So it'll yeah. probably look, I mean, not Same exactly here. like this because this is an older, but this gives you more of an idea of people that haven't seen it, but yeah. And and all the renders, all the so so you might see when we are filming in the office, you see the like the real headset, the, the prototypes we have, but the renders, all the renders we're doing uh, across time, um, they are made from the CAD model, uh, you know that we had at, that we have at the time. So this is this is uh, the the renders are made using a software called KeyShot. And you can you you can do very realistic uh, 3D renders like like that one, but the the core thing is coming from the CAD software, and it's not like something you know it's 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 the real thing, uh, and this one was a was an old one I can recognize this one, um, and the the new one you know we have the six cameras at the front and right. some stuff changed but uh, the the back is is. Uh, Different, different as well but yeah. yeah so so essentially you'll be able to take the the blinder i guess i don't know a better name to call but essentially you'll be able to take those on and off it'll be a magnetic Probably. yeah the with goal. the with the visor you know like you can you you put the visor in the up position nice. and you can remove very quickly the oh yeah the, the awesome. vr cover oh uh, yeah, that's yeah cool. we, we tested that it's 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 working well sometimes you so in VR, in pure VR, you want full immersion. You want the headset to be as black as possible mm -hmm. uh, and only have light coming from the displays. Um, but uh, in AR, you want your peripheral vision, right? Uh, because, you know, on your peripheral, this is where you see speed, motion, all that, mm -hmm. and, and where you get your balance. So uh, we restored the user peripheral vision uh, in the way we designed the the optics and the, the headset itself, uh, and it's working well. And and I want to you know double down on that. Uh, if you don't have a good color pass through with the right latency, you shouldn't open the peripheral vision because you will sure. see that you will perceive the, the lag you know between your your real yeah, view and what's in the center. Yeah. And we are so confident, and you can see the images we posted a few months ago about like what you see through the lens with your peripheral vision. Um, uh, you know, we are confident that we have here? the latency, mm -hmm. we have the quality, and w today we have a, an even better quality than what's in the images wow. right now. Um, awesome. So, so the, the image quality is about 66% 66 in, that, in that image. Uh, we have more uh, resolution and less uh, grain, uh, less noise in the, in the image uh, because we, we did uh, another pass on the, on the tuning. But um, yeah, you, you know, uh, you can see headsets that are doing pass through, but I'm not sure uh, they have the peripheral vision. And uh, it's a great way, you know, to test the lat lat latency. You know, you start with your hand on the side, and you go at the center, and you try to see the, the discontinuity in in speed or in uh, you know geometry. And we have something pretty compelling, so I'm, we are not afraid to to give you back this peripheral vision. Yeah. Just leave that up for one second, Sean. Okay. I guess I'm I'm so amazed by the lenses and stuff you're using. Yeah, I want to get um, into and I love I love the concept in it as well as getting them closer to your eye because as you can see, like with this image, even though you think you have this big faceplate in front of you, the the protruding lenses like that and actually. Oh, uh, what would that be convex or where it's going over ar around your eye instead of being cupped the other way, like a typical Fresnel lens, um, then you're, you're actually occluding a lot of that headset. So you're not even seeing the headset hardly looking through it. It looks just like a pair of glasses. Um, yeah. I, that's a really cool concept as well as I'm guessing it might eliminate God rays too. So um, uh, about the, the optics, um, we, we don't have any god rays. This is this is a freeform prism, so it's, it's basically plastic with mirrors, and it's not shaped the same way as a, as a, the hybrid frame lenses you might see mm -hmm. in other headsets. So we don't have any god rays. You can see in the videos that there there are some reflections, uh, right. second that order reflections from the lights in the mm -hmm. in the office. This is because it was filmed with a, with a GoPro. With, so so your head is bigger than a GoPro, so it will block more light than what you see 
uh, on the video. So you, you will see less uh, reflection than what you see on the, on the video. We are going to try to show you that in the, in the, coming, uh, in the coming weeks, of course, for the, the upcoming demos. But the, the, lens, uh, the, the lens has been uh, made with a, a Spanish uh, partner, a, a very specialized company. Uh, they're specialized in high performance uh, optics for VR and AR, but they are not, they are doing very unusual stuff. And we decided to work with them on these optics because of many reasons. The first one is you need a very slim headset for the pass through to have, uh, you know, to not have too much parallax between mm -hmm. uh, the distance. So, you know, the distance between your eye and the camera uh, is doing the parallax. So sure. it's not too uh, impacting for translations, but for rotation, it's, it can make you sick uh, very fast. Uh, so the more, the, the closest the camera is to your eye, the better. And for version two of Nix, we're working on stuff where the, the camera, the virtual plane of the camera is optically at you know, at the same depth as your as your eye. I'm not telling you too yeah. much here, but we continue to do crazy stuff. Wow. Um, and and you want to you want to have something slim. Then you you want to have something that can allow you to have light coming uh, on the side. You know, like uh, light from the sun or from mm -hmm. lights in the office in your room. Uh, and, and the traditional lenses they have a hard time with that. Uh, so this is a, another point. There is also the high resolution we can get on the center of these lenses and on the axis uh, because we are doing super uh, passive foveal super resolution as well as uh, uh, pixel interlacing uh, so you have for the same for the same point for the same information you can have two or four pixels uh, interlacing so you perceive mm -hmm. more than what's actually displayed on the on the screen yeah so tyler was trying to I explain had, that to me yeah. this morning actually <laughs> we have right. this image up here he was talking to me about this yeah. and i was having trouble understanding but that does that makes more sense but yeah, yeah. I, I think that's I, and i guess sean you know started to argue with me about it and he was worried about you know screen door and stuff um and, and or do, do you get overlapping to where it creates you know almost a uh, um a shadow of an image yeah so so i think one of my mistakes was um when I when I went to see some, uh, you know, financial people in France and in the U.S. a few months ago, I had a, uh, one of the lenses we we did before uh, production, and it has a small eye box. The eye box is the is the area. It's a 3D area where you can move your eye and still see the full field of view and no weird uh, weird stuff. Sure. Okay, uh, and and we had a too you know too small of an eye box, uh, and I did the demos with that. It was. Uh, obviously not great because you have a cross talk, you know, like between the four quadrants, you see some overlap. And yep. right now we we are actually uh, molding a, a new lens with the same architecture with a much bigger eye box. It's nice. a one point, um, uh, sorry, uh, plus minus 5.5 millimeters. Uh, oh, wow. And the previous, the previous one was plus minus 1.1 only, and it was working with the eye tracker, which was not on, so you had... Uh, you, you had a very bad uh, image if it if it if you did if you were not in, in the exact center. sweet spot in that sweet yeah. spot yeah the sweet spot yeah. and, and and right now we have a much bigger sweet spot we are using the same techniques um, just to also mention we have the same horizontal field of view as the Quest Two uh, I just wanted to mention that because people were you know uh, reading that our field of view is 90 degrees but it's actually 90 degrees vertical and horizontal. Uh, oh. It's a full circle. That was a question uh, so I was going to ask. We, <laughs> we lose, we lose in diagonal uh, because it's a circle, you know, not a not a square uh, or a rectangle. Uh, but but we have a very compelling field of view. Uh, it's, it's yeah. I mean, I mean, I can tell you about that for hours. But the best way is to just experience it, and uh, I just can't wait for 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 you to to try it and for the the people that will support her, support us on the Kickstarter to to try the device. Um, yeah, we're, we're but yeah, we, we did our best. We we worked with, we tried to work with the best. So you know, like Qualcomm or Limbac in Spain or Ultraleap and or, yeah. or even Japan Display for the the screens and all that. But uh, we are a very small company, so it was you know very hard to convince uh, people in this space uh, with all the you know the, the budgets that we don't have. <laughs> but uh, the the idea of the headset uh, made you know helped us. Uh, pitch and 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 right now we have this device and we are only a 15 people company that is uh, growing but uh, 
uh, I'm just very fortunate that we have all these partners and, and of course, people supporting us. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I can't wait to give you the toy. <laughs> and you've even got people that have done, you know, um, you know, enterprise headsets like people from uh, Star, right? Don't you have some people still on the team from Star? Um, we have or not currently. I have three colleagues, uh, Mark, uh, Jean-Marie and Laurent. They are uh, from Star VR. So if you don't remember that, it was a VR headset. So it was only VR, but uh, tethered to a PC. But it, it was one of the first to give you 200 degrees, like a full the full mm. field of view of the, the, the human vision system uh, in a VR headset. Uh, we have one at the office, so we, oh, we, awesome. we might we might show show, show you that uh, also. We have we have many headsets, including mm-hmm. that one, even if it w- if it didn't reach the market. Uh, and uh, two of them are uh, engineers, uh, hardware engineers, software engineers, and the, the third one, Mark, is helping us on the on the sales and the marketing and the partnerships and and uh, yeah, we have a lot of experience in the team. There are other uh, so the average age at Lynx is 43 years old. So I'm one of the youngest. Sure. Uh, and, they, uh, you know, uh, we have more than uh, 100 years combined of experience in VR and AR. And uh, we, we, you know, we like the same stuff as as everyone else. And we hate the same stuff uh, as everyone <laughs> else. So we are just trying to do our best. Um <laughs> We know that in AR, most of the stuff sucks to the, to this day. Uh, I'm, you know, there 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 are no yeah. two ways to, around it. Uh, uh, we we we're, you know, we we discuss with these companies as well, and uh, and that it took them a long time to see that uh, optical see through compared to pass through was maybe not the best way to to right. ar actually yeah, uh, yeah I, that's what we said earlier too i've talked about that forever the the best ar is vr and there is there's no better way and after trying hololens it proved it to me too you know i don't want this translucent object that's not crystal clear it doesn't feel like it's in front of me um and, and on top of it you know trying to fit everything in a form factor like glasses and stuff right um, you know, I understand it for other people seeing you, but visually for that person, it's just not on par. And I think, with what and I think that tech will, that tech will get there. You know, we're just not to a point of a full glasses form AR space Correct. yet. We're not there. You know, eventually it could get there. But but just a little bit more about the lenses. I, that is one thing that I'm super excited about when I first saw mm-hmm. those because to me, one of the biggest things holding VR back right now is lens technology. So I'm glad to see a, a completely different design, yeah. a different approach. I can't wait to uh, try that out. Uh, one thing we did want to get into because I don't think there's been a whole mm-hmm. lot of talk about it and I start to see uh, some questions asking about it is, is what is the plans as far as controllers? Because we know this is going to be a six yeah. headset. So uh, I'm I'm going to uh, on on next Thursday we have a live that we, I, I we'll do again at the office. But uh, we ha- we it's you know it's official. We 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 will have controllers from from the the, the one from Finch. I tested mm-hmm. them uh, I think on Thursday at the office. It's working very well. Uh, six do- two six DOF controllers. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I just, I just tried that with, with, with my team, it, you know, it's working. So, uh, I know that on day one, at least we will have those controllers that are compatible with the headset. We are, you know, we are exploring many stuff in hand tracking and controllers. We want to, uh, we, we want to make sure that the people that have content that need controllers will be able to, to use that content on the, on the headset. So, and, 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 you know, I, I want to point out that we were more focused on the uh, business and enterprise in AR, like MR, AR. So this is why the headset was designed as a hand tracking first uh, headset, like mm-hmm. the HoloLens or like, uh, you know, and, and, and because, you know, people are working using the headset, so, so they want the hands free. Uh, but now that we are also discussing with gamers and developers in entertainment, uh, the comments and, and everything we ran on the internet made us realize, so, oh, shit, we, we need controllers. Yeah. Um, but we have the technology, we have the hardware on board of Lynx to, uh, to have controllers. So, yeah. so, so I can image. tell you that Finch is working and we are, you know, uh, open to everything and testing uh, other uh, few solutions. Awesome. Yeah. So th- this image that we have up here is of some Finch controllers. I don't know. Yeah. That, I mean, it, yeah. is this similar to what it will look like? Is it going to be touchpad? Are you gonna? Are you looking at an option for thumbsticks? Joystick. 
Um, so, so yeah, what you have in the picture is what I, I tested. Uh, I, I, I remember it, it, we, so there are a few buttons and a touchpad on the controller and, uh, we'll see with Finch, uh, you know, it's in our discussion, what, what could be like the bundle with, with links, uh, it, it's not it's not decided yet, but uh, it's uh, you know it it will come and it will be uh, compatible. Also, I want to point out that you know controllers or hand tracking on all that will be the under the OpenXR runtime umbrella, um, and and that is all coming in uh, Q4. And we are working with 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 Qualcomm and Nvidia. Uh, we are working with Qualcomm for the XR2 part and with Nvidia for the Cloud XR part. Um, to to make uh, all things compatible. Yeah, awesome. Uh, let me yeah. touch on some of these super chats. We have super chats coming in, but we don't like to uh, interrupt. But uh, right. we have one from Tony Digital, twenty five dollars super chat saying VR news at its finest. Uh, thank you for that. We really really appreciate it. Uh, Arthur Knox with a five dollars super chat says AR LARPing would be the killer app for this headset. So <laughs> AR LARPing, <laughs> that is what he is requesting. Uh, Susan Cottrell with a twenty five dollars super chat said, "Good morning, gentlemen. I signed up for updates. Color pass Good. through." She said, "That is exciting." So and almost totally no latency. Agree. Yeah. Yeah, totally yep. agree. Uh, Arthur Knox, $5 Super Chat said, uh, what controller have you tried? Asking you, Stan, what controllers have you tried? Um, which do you prefer? Uh, gloves, Oculus Quest type controllers or Index, Knuckles type controllers? Uh, I like the I, I, I like the Oculus controllers because of the, the, the they're really, they're thinking about the torque. Uh, of when you're using the the controllers, you know the rotational mm -hmm. uh, weight distribution. It's uh, interesting. Um, I also like knuckles, but uh, to be honest, I'm more of a hand tracking guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, you know, I, I, as I told you, we're testing things. Uh, we are uh, we are in discussion with the company name also TGO. Uh, they are not very uh, well. Uh, known in the in the field maybe, but uh, they are also doing controllers. Um, so we are exploring uh, many things, uh, and also you know the platform would be pretty open. So mm -hmm. uh, if you want to add your own sensor, it can it can be input? It can be you know a camera sensor, depth sensor, anything. Uh, we will make sure and we'll work with with people to to make them compatible to add their driver to awesome. to our stuff. Awesome. I really want you know I'm I'm very excited about the the academia the research that can be done with with links um, and and when we were more focused on enterprise our second market was actually uh, research. Uh, so this is also why we are open by. By design in, in our in our headset, I agree. Everything won't be a hundred percent open source because, of course, you know, like companies like Qualcomm cannot open source everything. Right. Uh, there there is so much code in that, but you have to know that it's basically an, uh, vanilla Android with some drivers from uh, the Qualcomm stuff and the displays and the sensors. And uh, on top of that, we'll uh, try to uh, have people. Uh, you know, make them able to to leverage on this uh, XRT system. Yeah, I mean, uh, options are always good. So the fact that there, yeah. there potentially be multiple different controllers down the road that you could use with this headset, I think is absolutely phenomenal because everybody prefers something different. You know, some people like yeah, touch right. pads better than thumbsticks. You know, absolutely. I prefer thumbsticks over touch pads, but some people like knuckles design compared to Oculus design. It's all different. So, you know, with a lot of platforms like Quest, you know, you get what you get. You're not, you're not using other controllers with that. They're not going to let you, you know what I mean? Right. So the fact that it, things are more open is a very Modular. Exciting. Yeah, very exciting yeah. thing. Another thing that is just the fact that the battery is on the back. You know what oh, I mean? Like I that's one thing we've talked about for a long time with weight distribution uh, and stuff like that. So to see that in the design is very mm -hmm. exciting. Uh, I did want to ask a question. Go ahead, Tyler. You have a question. And bring the audio too, uh, right to the side of the, the strap and everything, uh, projecting it directly into your ear yeah. and as close as Actually, possible. Actually, that's, that's a good point Huge. too. Will, will you have an audio jack to put? Uh, your yeah. own headphone. Okay, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make and sure. I'm I think happy. I think I you can see it on the side uh, okay. already. And yeah, that's I like part the... for uh, storage. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, awesome. Cool. Another awesome cool. feature yeah. that some others don't let us have. <laughs> and I like the fact too that there's no obtrusion for headphones to go over as well. You know that strap yeah. will seamlessly pass right past even if you want to use your own headphones. Yeah. Um, and the fact that flips up. I mean, it's we love. There's so many design yeah, aspects I love the flip of up this aspect. that have 
Oh, that Since was the one thing one. I liked about Cosmos. Yeah. The only thing I liked about Vive Cosmos was the flip up <laughs> fact. That was the only thing I liked about it. But, you know, I, I I I told that with with my team a few weeks ago because we we are uh, reading like you the comments uh, about links on the uh, mm-hmm. internet, you know, on Reddit or uh, you know under the articles and all that, and 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 the famous guy said uh, his name was uh, Steve Jobs. I don't know if you if you know him, but <laughs> and, uh, this Not famous guy yet. said. Uh, you can please some of the people some of the time. And, and you know, even if we try everything, we might not be compatible with the thing you love. Uh, you know, maybe you don't like the, the, the back of the design with the battery, or maybe you, you don't want some of the, 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 the stuff we, we design, but we try to make a, a device that is uh, as versatile as possible. The, the key word for links mm. is versatile. It, it should address everything and the hard you know the hard stuff is you can make you can make a headset the the, the you can make a headset that does everything but bad <laughs> you know like right. you, you you want to try to do everything but it will end up clunky or too big mm-hmm. or laggy uh because you, co- you you don't compromise on on anything and we are compromising on a, a lot of stuff trust me we want to do more than right. what you see on the on the screen we as I told you, we're already working on version two. I already want version two on my head. It's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's part of the process, you know. Uh, if you want that 35 grams pair of glasses that will bring you into AR and VR in the future, we have to start with headsets like this. It, it, you know, there there are no two ways around that. Yep, I totally agree. Uh, one one thing that I did, I think on our previous stream when we talked about it, some people had concerns about tracking volume because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, there's going to be two cameras for tracking. Is that right? So to be clear about the cameras, the, the two RGB one, they're for the mm-hmm. moment, they're just doing pass-through. Uh, they're, they're using a special pipeline to, to deliver the, the pass-through feature. Uh, so you have... Uh, virtually no latency, but the the four cameras that are on the bottom of the headset that you can that you can see on the screen right now, um, they are the four of them are monochrome and two for six dots, two for hand tracking, and we can do um, we can also have algorithm to track any other kind of stuff. We have we have frames delivered from this camera that are not used yet, so we run them at a lower frame rate. For example, 6 Duff is running at 30, 30 arts. It can run at 60 arts. Hmm. Um, but the cameras are able to achieve 120 arts. So nice. if you want to have any other algorithm for tracking and the tracking volume, so about the tracking volume, the, the two hand tracking cameras are 127 degrees tilted 10 degrees down. And the two side cameras are pointing out each of them 15 degrees and they have 154 degrees of diagonal field of view approximately wow. from what I saw from the calibrations. Yeah. Nice. So, the hand, so, the, so the overall tracking volume, uh, even the way, with the way the cameras are set up, does, does a good it's, job. Uh, yeah, it, it does. It, it's, I don't think it's as big as the Quest 2 because of the way they're, uh, the, the way they're doing the, the, the six off. Um, they, they have a higher tracking volume, that's for sure. But ours is... Uh, it's pretty big too. I, I think we'll do a like a three D rendering of the you know the area it covers around you uh, okay. for uh, for next week. Yeah, yeah awesome. That's awesome. And, and you've also shown off in the the past too is a, uh, and I don't know if you're still doing it, but the magnets in the interface for the RGB uh, cameras. Are you still yeah, yeah, working with that for inter- enterprise? I'm assuming. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. We there are, are like uh, twenty magnets in the in links, and four of them are around the RGB cameras. Mm -hmm. Uh, So if you want to use uh, plugins for zoom or special color filters or any, you know, having any any kind of of stuff for enterprise, for example, you're a a surgeon uh, and you're working with, uh, you know, they're always working with a fixed focal uh, and, and, but they want to zoom like between four and eight times. So (laughs) you would, you would want this kind of plugins. Sure. Uh, you, you keep your peripheral vision so you can see the, the nurse entering the room, for example, on, on your side. 
but you have a, a zoomed in without losing any resolution because it's optical zoom. You know, it's not digital zoom. Right. Uh, so cool. And uh, and and that is also one of the killer feature for some enterprises. Jeez. And that, flip it up. the cost of that is two magnets for each camera. That's, right. That's incredible. Oh my gosh. That's incredible. Yeah. To think to be able to do that with that magnification and flip it up just like they would with their you know magnifications they use yeah. you know in surgery. Yeah. Um, but then to be able to be digitally doing something or use the AR to, you know, track something or mark something in surgery like that, it's limitless what you could probably yeah. do with something like this. So there, there is a lot. There is a long way to go uh, towards all these use cases. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we are starting with, with the hardware. We, we, we're we giving this hardware to people. Yeah. I want to address all the use cases, but I, I cannot, you know, uh, they, yeah. they, they are just too many. It's a new human machine interface. So there are just too many yeah. things to do. Right. Uh, but it's starting now with, with this hardware. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, when, if you give everybody the bases, you know, the, yeah. the solid bases, it, the, it's people can uh, run with it. Yeah. Endless possibilities right. of what people will do with it. It's yeah, crazy for sure. Uh, Arthur Knox had another super chat. Uh, he said, can you hot swap the battery? Is that something that'll be a possibility? No, you cannot for the version one. No, that's not, uh, that, 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 that was one, you know, one of the design choices we, we had to make. Yeah, uh, you cannot out swap uh, the the back battery, but but you can use the USB C to have the power pack. Oh, nice. uh, you know, for, and that 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 could do the trick. You know, if you want a, a longer battery. Awesome. Um, uh, there's yeah. also some other, really other good questions too. I want to uh, or the one I just saw. So, uh, uh, Brumi Dino said uh, wants to know about the IPD range. Uh, mm -hmm. He said Quest Two pushed me out with too low of a range as I'm 72 to 74. So what kind of IPD uh, adjustments or range or or what is that going to yeah. look like? And now we've got range. the extra five millimeter too, with the sweet spot. So I'm sure you yeah, can milk that, that even a little more. So the the range of the IPD. So so both lenses are are not linked. You can move them asynchronously. Okay. Uh, if oh, you have one, that's good. Yeah, you know. Because everybody's uh, and, different. Like people's mm -hmm, eyes aren't yeah. always. You know what I mean. So that's a good thing. Right. Yeah, you know there are some people that have the. You know they don't share the same zip codes between their eyes. But right. uh, for the majority of the population, of course, uh, we we try to do something to address that. And the range is fifty six to seventy two millimeters. No, no. It's not perfect. It's you know, we are still missing people here. Um, I hope to address that in, in, in the new form factor of, uh, of V2 in uh, what's coming after V1. But 60, 56 to 72 is, you know, it's it's decent, I think. So yeah, yeah. that's where we are today. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Other than that, everything just gets bigger. The headset gets bigger. Everything gets spread out. And... Yeah. 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 It's, uh, you know, the... You were you were saying that you think the limiting factor in headsets is optics. Um, it's both optics and displays. Um, mm -hmm, the, sure. the display technology that you're using can be, you know, like Elcos Micro LED uh, OLED Micro yeah. OLED. Can you can um, you tell us some about the displays that you have chosen to put in here? So those are um, the, the, there are two displays in links, uh, two LCD panels, uh, 1600 by 1600 uh, octagonal. LCD panels uh, from Japan Display. Uh, they have a, a very uh, low persistence on screen, uh, so you know you won't see uh, a smear uh, on the uh, on the display. Um, and they are running at 90 frames per second. And uh, so those were chosen at the end of 2019. And uh, I agree. I think some technical experts will tell me, well, why don't you choose OLED? You will have a lower latency on the pass-through. I agree. And uh, But uh, as you can see on the videos, we already have a pretty decent uh, latency. And the, the, the display technology is, is pretty good for, for this, this headset. The, yeah. the, what's important is the number of pixels you have per degree. Okay, And, and even if the lens we're using uh, doesn't give you it gives you an isotropic uh, pixel per degree value, but the average is around 17 pixel per degree, uh, which is the same actually as the Quest 2 again. So what you see in the Quest 2 would be the same as what you see uh, in Lynx. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Are you noticing like a higher resolution in the center because of the lenses, or is it just an overlap, or do you actually get better resolution out of it? You you. Uh, I, I think it depends, you know, from people to people. But myself, I, I perceive more resolution in the smaller cone at the center. Mm -hmm. Sure. 
like you, you're, you're reading text, looking at the center, and when you move, maybe you cannot read that text anymore uh, if, if you uh, switch that from the center to one of the sides. Uh, you, sure. you, you can do the test uh, yourself when you when, when we ship the device. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, Paradise Decay asked, uh, do you have any developers approach you uh, with software game ideas? Uh, I mean, I'm sure you've already been in talks with a lot of developers and studios and stuff to get, because like you said, not only are you building a, a headset, but you have to build a platform and an ecosystem around that headset, especially with this being, you know, a standalone device that's also going to be able to do some PC VR stuff as well. But uh, what, what does that look like from the developer side? That uh, So we contacted a lot of the Developers. Some developers contacted us on their own. Uh, we want to also, you know, use the Kickstarter as a promotion for both the device and also the ecosystem that's coming, and to show people that the developers that they, they, they love, you know, that that are building the stuff they love, will also work on the Lynx platform. So this is why, you know, we are pushing uh, OpenXR on our hand um, and um, I I won't disclose too much today, but uh, I would say they are, you know, I'm I'm discussing with honestly uh, people I respect a lot that are doing very impressive VR and AR uh, application, and uh, I hope they will be able to port their uh, content on links, uh, either in VR or AR uh, or both. So yeah. for some of them. And you've, but, teased, uh, you've yeah. teased about a, an AR application similar to uh, like Pokemon Go style that you've been teasing <laughs> a little bit. And I know yeah. you're probably limited on what you can say about that right now, but that is already very exciting to, to hear something. Yeah, that. so so yeah. I, I can't say too much, but uh, because I, I want you to experience it in August when we're going to release that, but we, we actually uh, design a... Uh, you know, our name is Lynx, so we like the animals. So we, we mm -hmm. design a, a demo around the uh, like uh, like a, a, a Lynx, a virtual Lynx that looks like a Pokemon, and and what what could be you know a an, a, a pass through version of Pokemon Go with a with a headset on your head, and how amazing it could be, really. Awesome. Compared to you know just having your smartphone in, in front of you and and this small window and very small input. Yeah. I couldn't imagine going in between, you know, VR and AR like that seamlessly, you know, yeah. seeing a, an image of a world and then all of a sudden that world is in your world. And like, those are the things so that I feel magic. like will blow my mind. So like, much yeah. magic. You're going to, to see that. You're going to oh, see that a lot. So yeah. amazing. It really yeah, that, is. That is really cool. Um, Artful or somebody was asking about if you've been talking with Guy Godin and I think, or Guy, I, and I think you have already, as far as I know, um, and getting virtual desktop maybe working with the headset as well. I, um, so I, I discussed with him very briefly on, on Twitter, and uh, uh, he, he told me that uh, he, he might support other headsets, and he's, he's, he's planning to, uh, but uh, we first have on our hand to support uh, OpenXR for him to consider, yep. uh, you know, eventually uh, porting uh, virtual desktop. Uh, so I, I made a claim uh, in, in the last live like that um, a virtual desktop could uh, you know could be pre-installed on, on the headset. That's that's not you know like uh, as I wrote after that's I, I got ahead of myself and we are not at that stage uh, sure. at, at all. We're you know but, but we we have a we have a contact. Uh, he's um, he has very great experience with the XR2. You know he's been doing. Uh, uh, stuff around the, the chipset to optimize the, his app. So this is why also I contacted him because he's already familiar with the mm -hmm. platform we are uh, working on. So uh, yeah, we, we have contact. Uh, he's one of the many developers we are, we are discussing with. Uh, but uh, this, you know, to go further, we'll have to ship him a headset when the OpenXR thing will be ready in, in Q4. Right. Awesome. Yeah, man. Are we so? Are we looking at the same timeline? I guess for the headset you've been talking about, around, you know, being ready with one end of the year, maybe first of the year with one getting to consumers, or are we still on track for that? Or right. So what's going to happen is we're going to run that Kickstarter. Okay. Hopefully, it's going to work. Uh, and after that, to get a, a product to consumer, you have a lot of work to do with your manufacturer. You have to go through many stages that are called, you know, like EVT, DVT, PVT, like uh, design and validation testing, product validation mm -hmm. testing, mass production, uh, you know, all, all that. It's a complicated job. We've been uh, working with our manufacturer for the last 
uh, 18 months now to to have the, the you know the device ready uh, to to this um, manufacturing facility uh, and all the certification and all that. So I think once the Kickstarter is done, we are going to build uh, around 300 devices that will that are uh, in the DVT and PVT stage, which is just before mass production. And those we are going to ship them to the developers, the first adopters, uh, uh, people that need to see the, the device and, and for trade shows and all that, you know, for CES in January. Mm-hmm. And then the mass production, uh, it's going to happen in January so we can ship in uh, in February. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, that is awesome. Uh, Guy Godin's wow, actually yeah. in, in chat. He said, thanks for correcting the info. Oh, um, he said, looking forward to trying the headset. So he is. Okay, yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Uh, we've had some other questions. Uh, Traveling Man 3775 asks, can mobile phone apps in general uh, work on the link? So I'm guessing like an Android type application. So Maybe that's actually very hard to do because, yeah. uh, you know, it's, we have the hardware and, and software basis to, to do something like that, but you have to imagine that uh, you have you have to get the frame buffer of a 2D apps into a 3D, you know, reprojected mm. in a 3D world. Um, and the, the first app we are trying to do that with is the is a is a web browser because it's one of the most important apps that you should have on a headset, right? Uh, uh, access to internet uh, because the headsets. Mm like a smartphone or a laptop is also a communication device. So um, it's hard. I, 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 we don't have a, a clear date. I don't have a clear date in mind for when it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, for all the apps, like all Android apps uh, that, that could be published on links, either as 2D or 3D. For 2D apps, I don't know. For 3D, I know that we already have the Unity SDK running uh, and, and transitioning to OpenXR right now. But uh, yeah, 2D apps is... is, is I know it's not. Uh, uh, it, it seems easier, but it's actually uh, more difficult uh, yeah. because you have to to change the Android, the Android layout system and all yeah. that. It's, yeah. it's, it's so, a lot of job. Uh, Brumi Dino said, uh, "I wonder if it would be possible to watch a movie in AR. So you see your living room, but a massive 200 inch screen on the wall. And I imagine that would be something that would be possible in this." He he also said. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be an awesome family experience. So if somebody was able to get multiples of these headset, is there a oh, way man. to link together <laughs> to where you can, multiple people can see the same AR rendering in the same space? Yeah, we are actually, we are absolutely working on the, you know, multiplayer uh, shared six DAF experiences. Awesome. Uh, yeah. uh, so, 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 you know, it's, it's more on the uh, application layer, but uh, as I, as we're mm-hmm. going more and more to do, <laughs> to the consumer apps, we are uh, at least working more and more on the application layer of the of the system. Um, I won't advise you maybe to to watch a movie in AR uh, on, on a headset. Be- I'm not sure if the pixel per degree will give you a, a, the right experience compared to right. a traditional TV screen. But you can you can def- we will have a like a um, a movie player. We already have a movie player and a, and a photo player in in, in our uh, core uh, platform. Awesome. Yeah. I, I can't. I couldn't imagine the multiplayer uh, situations with AR and how that yeah, could that be and be feel. Really cool. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, like a tabletop game with the people on your table. You know, feeling yeah. like they would be almost be there with you. Playing Little a, things like a that. Localized version of Demio right. through AR on right. the table exactly. with four friends on your of, actual yeah. table, <laughs> yeah. and theirs is on their actual table. You know, stuff yeah. like that. Oh, it's man. really cool. It's really really cool. Yeah, stuff. and don't don't stay limited to a table. You know, we're yeah you're True. doing six stuff for bigger volumes. So, uh, yeah. For sure. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, I can't wait, man. Oh, I'm trying to think see. if I had any great other good questions I've been dreaming of. Um, man. You know, it's I guess... uh, the, the biggest frustration is on my side. You know, we we, we have stuff at the office. We, we right. see what you're going to, to, to experience. And it, it's frustrating not to be able to just, you know, ship the thing and, and, yeah. and, and multiply it uh, by magic. But that's actually one of the hardest things to do. 
Yeah. Sure. You've been working on this so long and have so much passion in this, which I applaud you for, um, that it shows. It really does. And when you have that, then you just want to release it to the world and show them like, hey, look what we're doing. This is so <laughs> cool. But you can't yet, you know, but yeah. we understand that. Soon, but, though. Yeah, soon. I mean, yeah. we will definitely keep everybody updated on once the Kickstarter go live and put out those links, because I know me and Tyler will definitely be uh, getting yes. in on that as soon yes. as possible. Is there going to be some early 100%. bird specials? Like, should people be watching to jump in this right away? Is there going to be some early yeah, stuff going on? Um, so the numbers today, uh, uh, I don't know what we'll do for the base model, but you you, you know the transparent model we're mm-hmm. seeing yeah. on the screen right yeah. now? Uh, I think we're going to build a thousand of them uh, only. Awesome. So it's it's going to be a really special edition. That's cool. Um, and, and, and yeah, the, the prices you'll see on Kickstarter are lower than you know what will be uh, sure. when of course when the, the device ships uh, um, in, in, in 2022 so yeah I, I would advise you know I even advise businesses to order like the first device uh, on the Kickstarter to you know just test the thing and see if they want to go further for deployment so yeah awesome um, yeah so virtual Steve uh, thank you for that super chat he said any thoughts on gamifying exercise with AR because we've definitely seen how powerful exercise can be uh, utilizing VR but even with AR a lot of those same ideas could be expanded upon even more sure. uh, in an AR space yeah yeah I'm, I'm uh, I know some developers uh, working on that uh, and uh Gamification. I mean, I mean, fitness in AR or VR is is going to be uh, big. It's yeah. where, you know, in the core uh, entertainments and gaming uh, thing you can have on a, with, with a headset. So it's uh, it's very cool. Uh, I, I'll try that myself when when someone will will develop an app. For sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, so I saw Sleepy Chin said, will there be more than one size storage and price point? So I know that it's supposed to be 128 gig storage, but it is expandable uh, mm-hmm. through a micro SD slot that you talked about it. So is that going to be, exactly. the, so that'll be the, everything, all of them will be 128 gig, right? And then you can expand it with that SD card. Yeah, so the so the, the, the storage chip is uh, soldered on the board. So you cannot expand 120 gigabytes on the system. But you can expand it with the micro SD card that we, slot that we put on the on the left side of the of the headset, and I think you can go up to two terabytes uh, wow. SD card. So, wow. I mean, if you want storage, we you know you're, you're free here. <laughs> yeah. uh, awesome. Jeez, awesome. yeah. Good stuff. Man. Anything else you have, Tyler, that you wanted to uh, make oh, sure you man, ask? I don't know. I'm like, else? Um, also, anything else that you gosh. want to share, Stan, that maybe we haven't asked and that you just want to let everybody we, know? Uh, That's true. So, uh, yeah, I shared with you some of the stuff I'm going to say next Thursday in, in more details, but uh, we also have some other announcements coming for the live next week. Uh, I hope people will, will see that. I'm sure it's going to be repackaged in uh, maybe in articles or, or because we're not great at the live. Uh, the first live we did at San Francisco, we didn't have the audio. So, uh, yeah, but we'll, you, you'll see more and more announcements and uh my my team is working uh and and i'm actually impressed by the work they're making with uh, demos because right now we have we have you know fully functional uh devices that match the final product uh mechanically but also on the software so uh and i can't wait to to share with you it's going to be third or fourth week of august just before the kickstarter the price, but also the the demos, uh, and and in the meantime, next week you are going to have other announcements uh, to discuss. Yeah, awesome. sure. And, and what is but the I name guess... of your channel? I, we, I don't know if we put the link. Did you put the link to the channel in the description? We'll need to add that if we had, but uh, not to the YouTube channel. But yeah. I will. So what I'll is your sure YouTube channel? Just yeah. so anybody wants to jump on uh, there and get the uh, updates. It's uh, uh, Links MR. Uh, you should you should you should find that yeah, uh, or you that. know you just tap links vr in, yep, in the it comes up. search yeah yeah and Absolutely. we'll add that in there afterwards as well i guess so. my my one biggest question is what is what is the thing you are most excited for personally for this headset or even if you haven't talked about it not that i want you to but what's coming or what this headset does what is your most excited personal feeling about it so uh, but th- th- there are things I'm excited about the product itself, the, the V1 that, that we are building for sure. And and there are also things I'm excited about the company. You know, like my team, the culture we are building, 
the, the community we are that is growing around us and and the spirit of uh, of of what we are doing uh i'm as excited as as that that as i'm for for the product uh and, and you know one thing I, I saw online and i i want to point out is um <laughs> it it might be naive but uh, I, I'm not doing that for for the money. You know, if I was doing that for the money, I would have said yes to 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 some proposals right. I had for, from a big company some, some time ago. Uh, I'm doing that because I think we need something like what we're uh, shipping. Uh, we are going to ship with with, with links, uh, and I'm excited that it's. I think you know it will depend entirely on the Kickstarter, and if if there is a critical mass of people that want a privacy friendly headset want an affordable headset uh and and that is open i i think i think there is uh, you know i uh and and i'm excited to validate that that i think that's the thing i'm most excited is to validate the vision i had two to three years ago uh when i really started doing what i'm doing now and i you know to say yes you know like i was right you know like pass through is the the go-to way for ar right now i mm -hmm. was right people uh, one competition, uh, especially with a, a company like Facebook. So I want to va to validate that. And and if I'm wrong, then you know it's, it's you know no one no one will will, will die from that. But <laughs> I really want to be right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and I think yeah. I, yeah. I mean, we definitely are excited for what you ha what you're doing. We're, we definitely stand behind you know the core values that you're putting into this. I think a lot of yep. people can appreciate that in the space that we're in right now. I think it, it's really commendable so i'm definitely excited uh i i did want to mention arthur knox's last super chat he said uh, uh ar killer app would be a 3d assistant or siri with a 3d body he said what do y'all think and i think that's a cool <laughs> idea definitely a cool idea a guy, we all, guy we all know it's going to be porn uh i mean <laughs> 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 oh my gosh! Sadly, I don't I, I'm think kidding. About but that, you know, right. VR, it, it is uh, right. It, it's selling very, very well, and we had some companies approaching us around that. Uh, so, sure. Uh, but well, no, the old no, motto, but, "Sex sells," I guess, is, is, is yeah, <laughs> it relates to a lot of I, things. Right. I so. don't know what the killer app uh, will be for AR, but my my instinct is telling me there are some new forms of games we're going to see sure. that. And some developers are just waiting for a pass through headset. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, look out for that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely exciting stuff. And uh, we definitely appreciate you coming on. Uh, some people were thanking you uh, for, for simplifi simplifying things uh, for where, you know, a lot of people can understand uh, what you're talking about, not using, you know, super technical terms that get confusing. So I think everybody was <laughs> pleased to be able to understand some of the things you were uh, talking about. We just we definitely appreciate you coming on. We are we, we have really been do. very excited for this headset for a long time. This is definitely something that both of us are, are definitely going to be getting our hands on. Uh, and I know there's a lot of people in the chat that are excited for it. So so, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we wish you oh, the best. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, yeah. keep us updated with anything. So. And, and the leap you took, because I, that's a hard thing to do and to jump and to go into the consumer market and go up against the big boys. Uh, I guess big boys. I don't know. <laughs> whatever they are. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we really do appreciate that as, you know, the VR community doesn't have many big voices um, that really pull for the community and not just for the financial, you yeah, know, backing and privacy and taking everything that they can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. appreciate it. We definitely okay. uh, will be keeping everybody updated. Check out uh, his live stream next week, as well as the Kickstarter details coming up in uh, August. And uh, it's uh, definitely exciting time. So. And add to the sign up list in the description. Yeah, yeah. Sign up for the uh, notifications. <laughs> thank you. thank for, you so much, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, You're welcome anytime. You so we'll, have, much, we'll, we'll definitely have to do this again. So, absolutely. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, with pleasure. Definitely. Okay. Awesome. Good talk to you guys. Talk yep. to you soon. Yep. See, ya. See you soon. So, Tyler might resize here once uh, the, the call oh. ends, but maybe. Yeah, but man, I, I just, I, I want it so bad right now. It's such a problem. Like, you know, I see all this and we're getting more info and it's coming, but it's actually coming even sooner than I probably expected. You know, we see all these Kickstarters run and then, you know, we're a year out or, you know, in some other headphone cases, we're two years out. 
Um, but you know, yeah. he's planning on getting this to manufacturing immediately. And it looks like they already have that ready to go. Yeah. Um, yeah. which is awesome. So that means sure. what first part of the year. So we're only talking now a couple months, you know? Yeah. It's, I mean, uh, we're going to be getting point. info very soon, uh, and definitely, oh. definitely sign up for, to know about the Kickstarter and stuff, because that is definitely something that oh, we dude. are both going to do. You know, we, we've, we've yes. kickstarted a couple things and so far we've had really good luck uh, with Kickstarter. So really looking forward to that. I really can't wait to try this. Uh, we're going to try to, to, to steamroll well, through some quick news stuff. real quick because yep. we went for a little while with him. So it's not quite over yet, but it is uh, getting there. But we want to talk about some big stuff that happened this week. Uh, curious to know what yep. your guys is most exciting news from this week. One of the things I think that was most exciting uh, is an announced date for Lone Echo 2. And not only that, but right. now you can buy the first Lone Echo for $10. Cheap. Like literally, it yep. was normally $40 for a long time. Uh, $10 you can buy Lone Echo. So I definitely recommend picking that up while you can. Yep. And the release date is August 24th for Lone Echo 2. So big news. That's coming that's, too. That's big yeah. news. And it is going to be PCVR only. It is not a Quest title. You can play through a uh, link or through a wireless link for virtual desktop, any of that kind of stuff. But big, big, exciting news. Uh, another thing this week was Yuki. Yuki released from Arvor, people from Pixel Ripped. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. of people have been playing this. Definitely a bullet hell game, which it lives up to that hype. They've done some really cool things in VR to make it uh, really feel magical. This is some of the recorded yeah. footage. And actually this first opening scene when you're in here in this room, it looks awesome. I love this room. I wish I could have touched more and played with more, but really cool. They're um, really good with using VR to its like full potential. Yeah, very they good really team. Are. Very good team. Yeah. It really works some magic in this game. I think it's pretty cool, especially for those of you that are big bullet hell roguelite type, you know, game gamers that I think you're really going to feel the magic in this one. Uh, we do have a Gleam giveaway going on for this game. Uh, there's actually three Gleam giveaways going on right now in the description. Uh, one for this, one for Madrid Noir, the VR experience that uh, we talked to the, the uh, director this past week, uh, which was really cool. So there's that, and there's also the giveaway for the, i think this one's about to end the deca move this one's about to end here pretty soon uh giving yeah. two deca moves away uh shipped straight from the company but yeah check That's out in the those. description yeah check out those in the description chat. Yep. yep uh but yuki let me know what you guys think i think this is a, a pretty pretty interesting game it looks cool it's fun to mm -hmm. play you're basically using her mm -hmm. as a character like you would have when you were a kid you know flying around and dodging bullets and shooting back and there's definitely some boss levels and stuff that are it's pretty unique. I think it's it's kind of mm -hmm, cool sure. in VR. It's uh, it might not be for everybody, but it is kind of a cool, uh, unique experience. I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, another <laughs> we, we got to talk about Population One because I think we do every week. Oh yeah. Uh, right, right. Th th so we know season two is over. We know there is a big update coming very soon. Uh, Population One. They're calling it Kingdom Age, uh, and you can decipher quite a bit about this from the image here, right? Yeah. So I, are, are we going to see it in the same place as like frontier? Um, maybe, or we are only, we shifting this we completely can only or speculate so much, but there's definitely going to be some right. updates to the map. Uh, even in their thing, they said four big events, tons of rewards, new areas to explore. So we're going to see some new areas to explore in the map. You may yep. be able to depict what that might be from the image here. Oh, sure. Uh, this is a two, two full month, uh, of four big events, uh, and they're asking, will you side with good or evil? Will you pick up a sword and fight? So Swords. interesting that yep. wording there. I think you can kind exactly. of depict some things that may be sure. coming. Uh, Arthur Knox for another super chat. Uh, I don't even know how many that's been from him today. Right. He said, Seriously, Phil Spencer man. say they want Cheers. to work with Oculus Air Facebook. They did say that? Like they officially said that? Yeah, I did I miss something? I don't know. Well, that'd be good news. <laughs> so yeah, pretty excited about Population One. We love the game. We still play it. Uh, the new update Constant is updates, going so. to be awesome. Yep. Uh, keep an eye on the channel. We may, you may be getting some more info about this maybe pretty soon on the channel. Yep. Hopefully, we'll, we'll see how that all works out. But uh, new skin on there too. You can just barely oh, see. Oh yeah, it. there'll definitely be some new skins. You know that. Yeah. You know there'll always. definitely be some uh, new skins. Another thing is yep. that Oculus has now enabled pass through uh, on the Quest Two for developers to start playing yep. with, which is something they've you know limited for a long time and now they're finally giving uh the green light for developers to start playing around with some of the things they can do uh obviously you're still going to have the black and white pass through which is right. kind of a bummer you know lower resolution black and white pass through so kind of a i mean i still think they can do some really cool stuff with it but it's sure, it's going to be can. you know i would love to see the quest to come with color pass through and i think probably a pro version down the road is going to have that but uh at least some right. developers can start playing around with this but not a whole lot I think you can do really do with it, but I mean, it's, 
I guess good to get them started if that's yeah. where and they're I mean, going I think with you'd it, be surprised so. uh, some of the stuff people people can come up with but I think that is uh, pretty cool uh, another thing is that was big news this week and I've me and Tyler talked about it a little bit I talked about it a little bit with my wife is the whole super hot uh, thing of right. the fact that they've taken out the self harm aspect out of super hot you know if you've played super hot there you come to a level that you, you kind of don't know how to end the level until you turn the gun on yourself and you essentially shoot yourself right. and that's what you know takes you to the next level and I remember playing this way back when and being like whoa that was pretty crazy and right. and there's a lot of mental health stuff that goes into this you know and there's a lot of discussion of you know they should have kept it a toggle for you can toggle it on and off you know why are they taking this away i i don't really know i can see both sides of it i'm curious to know what other people's thoughts are of this decision that they've made is this a good decision bad decision so i think for me the hardest thing is that was a great part in the game when it's like you have to like it it took me into it like whoa like this is it was what vr can do for you and take you out of what you could actually do so it gave me those feels, but I, I understand it. You know, I mean, you do have to draw a line at a point, but yeah. I mean, I, I can understand I like that maybe there it could be an age thing or yeah, and that's that, part of I the like problem. The check- part of the problem we always talk about is that parents don't parent. So kids get in here that don't have fully developed brains to make good they decisions. Shouldn't have a gun and, game anyways. Yeah, yeah. And they, they make the, they do those things. And, you know, my wife said, you know, those things right. you do them enough, you create a muscle memory and there's a weird chemistry that goes on in your brain. And, and I can understand some of that, you know, there's a lot of people that sure. uh, have mental health issues, you know, for me, I never, it never really affected me in that kind of a way. But if you have some of those mental health issues that I can see that, you know, being kind of a, a, a bad connection in your brain doing those kind of things it's a very weird topic and and video games in general have always had these topics of violence and stuff and and it does get interesting you know what i mean i saw people make comments about you know in the game it's okay to shoot other people but it's not okay to turn the gun on yourself in the game and i was talking to my wife about this because she's in mental health uh field and so she gives me aspects that i never even consider but she said you know in the game you know you're in a defense mode there's characters coming after you and you're defensively you know, protecting yourself in some kind of a sense where, yeah, where, you know, there's a a different mental aspect that goes into it doing that compared to, and and even she doesn't like violence in video games anyway. She's not a fan of any of the violent video games, you know, like we play and stuff, but, uh, yeah. And a gaming science teacher said it made me uncomfortable. I'd have I'd have appreciated a pop up at the beginning asking if I wanted That's to turn it I off. Said. I didn't know the option was there before starting. Right. Yeah, that is true. And and, and yeah. I can I can understand both sides news. of the argument to an extent, you know, because the people are getting very heated over this discussion and there is, you know, a heated debate back and forth. And in some sense, I can understand both sides. I don't even really know where I sit on it because I like having choices because, you know, I don't I don't struggle with that mental health aspect, but I have respect sure. for somebody that does. And I don't want them to be put in a situation that you know it's just weird i don't know i don't it's just weird it's weird and then if the characters aren't person like is it the same and it doesn't matter and yeah it's yeah it's endless i mean i I talked about this a couple weeks ago the original grand theft auto back in the day that was the huge thing like yeah you know it's going to cause kids to be shooters and stuff back in the day and now look at that that's vanilla compared to what you can do now in games so yeah for sure it's it is tough for sure i wanted to break down so joy way has put out quite a few titles lately and this is their latest announcement outlier and this looks really really good and we're going to break some of this down a little bit but uh, some of our concern is the fact that they've been putting out a lot of games lately announcing Mm -hmm. a lot of games and none of them have really come out of early access you know and we still don't have some like the against game which i really really like uh that's not even really out yet there's a demo uh as well as stride which stride is really good they've been updating they're doing a good job of updating that and bringing more to the game that's actually coming to quest uh i saw that on the upcoming releases for the quest so that is coming to quest pretty soon uh which will be really cool they've done i mean they're the studio themselves themselves are doing some really cool things and this is another one that looks really cool some of the stuff if you really break down this trailer and watch it it is really some interesting stuff right and but i'm a little concerned focus that i think they need to focus a little bit i I get it but i think they're taking like the accumulation of what they've learned and just keep throwing it at new stuff um the controls Uh, this i love like the their particle effects for like destroying people um characters coming together guns reloading like shooting guns and then coming back to the gun from the player you killed throwing objects i mean 
this there's so many tidbits in here like you'll see at the end of this where the boss is like rubble on the ground and like Formed. comes together and stuff and yeah it looks amazing like here the guns with the ammo going on to it yeah. like that it's just and even just the objects being able cool to things, pick up man. objects and throw the yeah. objects at there you know almost like super hot in a sense you know that that happened a lot in super hot we talked about that sure uh, did, yeah. it's a pretty cool looking aspect to this game and like you said a lot oh, of the things even good. the throwing the fireballs and the movements of you know you can kind of i'm yeah. guessing they're taking some of the movements from stride like some of the jumping yeah, and that kind jumping. of stuff yeah mm -hmm. to be able to to do some of these mechanics it looks very fast paced uh it looks great it, yeah it looks really cool when you really watch this trailer and i hope they can pull all these games off and make them all great you know instead of trying yeah. to it almost feels like they're trying kind of trying to throw everything out there and yep. see what sticks and i don't want them to do that necessarily i want right. them to be able to focus on it because they have all their ideas have been really right good here. watch the ammo come back like snap back to the gun yeah. like oh that's so cool man yeah, and then the really boss cool. here and here's the oh, here's the so boss many cool things. watch this here this is really neat so it just dope. constructs just like the whole thing yeah and then you're like yeah. oh crap that thing just like you didn't even see him coming it was just a bunch of rubble <laughs> yeah. and now it's like oh man right. this dude's huge so now you're running away like, yeah oh, some so really good. really cool stuff i am excited yep. to uh play it they uh, i thought stride was a great game super challenging for me i've still never got good at it but it's an awesome game uh i'm really excited for against now i'm excited for outlier too i just i hope they can pull them all off you know i don't know how big their sure. core team is i have to imagine they got quite a few people to be able to work on multiple projects and team on each like, one yeah <laughs> yeah some so really good. cool stuff i mean when you break this trailer down it really has yeah. some cool stuff so i'm excited yep. to try this and play it and uh, I, know. I mean this game's right up our alley so i'm definitely excited yep. uh another thing i wanted to mention was larsenot's update they find I mean, this they they did an update of how right. the game should have launched they should have launched the game because i played it some this morning and i basically walked away from it after launch week because i just couldn't stand playing it it felt so janky yeah. to me the movement was so Slow, weird like there was clumsy. just so much of it yeah, yeah that i didn't like the reload so now they have you can still do the auto reloads you can do uh full manual reloads which feel pretty good um way better than before and also the movement system you can adjust the movement system stuff so now you know, with your hands down, you can still sprint. You can turn while you're sprinting where before you couldn't really right. like it was like slow motion turning when you were sprinting. It felt terrible. Game feels way better. My question is, is it too little DOA. too late? It's DOA, I mean, man. Yeah. Is it? I mean, that's the thing. I, I mean, I know I, there's still some people that play this, but not I haven't sure. heard a whole lot. And there are some that are jumping back in, but there's some that originally returned it because they thought it was not good like I did. It's, uh, it's the same Solaris is, it, issue. It, you know, it, they could have had a huge player base if they dropped it right. right. And everyone was playing it and obsessed with it. And more people get in and more friends play it. The more people want it, it's just... Yeah, I don't know, man. I feel this like is, this is this is how the game should have launched. I mean, if you were yep. if you were uh, on the fence or you tried it before, I do recommend going back in because it does feel a lot better. Yeah. Uh, it, it's still I don't know. The game to me still kind of feels like it's geared towards kids. I don't know. Like I get that feeling every time I play it. I don't know why, but uh, I mean, I guess a right. lot of games can be, but it I don't know. It's don't it's know. still it's not a game that I see myself playing a whole bunch. Even with these updates, I think it feels way better. It's a much improved game, but I don't know that it's going to be a game that like I sure. play as much as we have contract. I'd rather go into Solaris or, even yeah. myself. I like Solaris. I do like Solaris yeah. now, but again, it's player base. I mean, I feel like they killed their yeah. player base, so yeah. it's hard. And th but this game feels yeah. way more fast paced now. It's very fast paced compared sure. to what it was before. It, uh, it definitely feels better. I mean, shout out to them that they got this update out there. Right. I just wish it would have launched. I think we'd, it would be a totally different game if it would have launched this way. And we've talked about that a bunch, like get it right. And that's, you know, after the fall has pushed back again to probably the fall, you know, later this I'm year. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that because I am so excited for that game. I want it to launch and I want everybody to be like, holy crap, this game is absolutely amazing. Not, right. oh man, why did they do this? Why did they do this? This feels like crap. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want that. So take the time. If you need a little bit more time to make sure it's right, take it. That's okay. Yep. We, we'll be forgiving exactly. in that aspect. Do I want to wait any longer? Absolutely not but i will yeah. to have a, a good launch so yeah I, it's it's hard i mean it's uh, reading chat it's like you know some people want to pick it up which i agree now you probably could pick this up and be a great game yeah um and others say they returned it and stuff which yeah it, it was uh, the first time i went into this game i'm like nope yeah. I knew within minutes that yeah. As soon I'm as like, I started no, moving around, I was like, "No, this done. is terrible. Like, this right. is too. The movement system is not good. The the auto reloads of the gun jumping out of your hand and reloading was too weird. Like, right. did too much of a disconnect." Yep. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, and one yeah. thing, so I expect you to die too is coming out, and I got to tell you, this trailer is how trailers should be done for VR. This is a full yep. mixed reality trailer. Totally gives the perception of what it feels like to be in a game like this. Very well done on this trailer. Yes. I think they did a killer job on this trailer. And this will be a great game. Yeah, it really. I mean, will the first be. one, first was one's a great. Hit. Yep. Exactly. And this one will just be even better. Yep. Um, so yeah, definitely keep an eye for this. If you want a game, pick up 
awesome game. Yeah. Good puzzle game. I just love this trailer. This is, I could watch this trailer all day because I don't understand why more <laughs> games don't do this kind of trailer. It's just, it's so it just gives you what it feels. I mean, this is what it feels like to be in VR. You right. are sitting in that space. You're seeing this around you. You're picking up things. You know, it's very, very well done on this trailer. Very exciting. So uh, another yeah. thing I did want to mention is that V31 is starting to come out. I haven't got it Oop. yet, but this is another big Oculus update. Uh, some pretty cool stuff about this that they're doing is the fact that you can easily jump into games with friends. You can send a notification grab that and you can jump right into that space uh, with that friend, which is something that I think is pretty cool. And I guess the bigger picture of Mark Zuckerberg talking about how Facebook is going to build the metaverse. Essentially, if you listen sure. to that podcast, uh, essentially they said they're going to be a metaverse company. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know. That's a scary verse there, but a little bit, a little bit, but, little bit. but we'll see what, I mean, they have, they have the money and the stuff to do some, some cool things. So I guess we'll see. They do. And goes, people but. will like it. They like the ease of it and people love their Facebook. Um, yeah. Not as big of a fan, but you know, yeah. I mean, I still love the quest Two. The quest Two is still a great headset. Absolutely. So I definitely am yep. and excited to see, but that was mainly, uh, some of the stuff with the V 31, some of the stuff with password saving, uh, yep. the, the password friend privacy improvements. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like there's a bunch of little stuff like that in the update, but the bad thing is they push out a lot of these updates and a lot of the updates will be great for some things and break other things. You know, a lot of people are having issues with V 31 and Wi-Fi stuff. I have the same issue. I have disconnects, you know, I can't air link was working great for me before V 30. Now air link is almost unusable because it disconnects well, quite a bit and still i think the last two i've had all the tracking issues which I, you said you haven't had but every yeah. time i go to load in it can't find any of the tracking and stuff and then it jumps into it um you mean it, the it's just, tracking or the uh the play space well it's play space yeah but tracking, i have had some of that it doesn't issues. show any tracking when you put it on it's black for maybe oh, yeah i don't know 20 or 30 seconds yeah uh, and then it comes in and says you don't have any boundaries then it finds the boundaries and i've yeah, heard of all the you know you delete everything guardian and whatnot and yeah. uh, well hopefully v31 will fix some of the wi-fi issues and some of the other issues i don't know that it will it'll probably cause some other issues so right. uh, oculus yeah. updates can be pretty hit or miss they uh yeah which is odd I, which I, I still don't know why it breaks and on some and then others not and whatever yeah so goes. reckoner yeah. vr said what zuckerberg has been saying lately is actually encouraging to me the open xr stuff plus the way he described the metaverse was more of a as a collaboration with a wide number of companies so i i listened to probably the first right. half of that podcast and i haven't had the time to listen to the full thing yet so i am going to do that uh this weekend finish listening to that but it is it is some cool sounding stuff that they're talking about and right. uh, the metaverse Absolutely. is something that we need to get to you know that ready player one where it's just a massive universe you jump in and out of things you team up with friends very easily uh, also the ready player me avatar stuff they've been working on some stuff to bring that to more platforms more of a you know i see a space where i get my avatar the way i want it and i take that avatar with me everywhere everywhere and that right, is sure. something that i think also we need to get to unless it's something that completely yeah. can't work with that avatar but for the most part the metaverse aspect has always been intriguing that's one of the reasons i like the movie ready player one so much you know what i mean i know so. Yeah, but it is Facebook IOI. <laughs> that's a scary <laughs> well, thing. That's another, that's another discussion. I still, I still like the uh, at seeing yourself, like looking down and seeing yourself would just be oh, amazing. Like in the links, how Stan was talking about. Yeah. <sighs> be yeah. so cool man I, and I so think, cool you know that and we've always talked about how i mean I, even in the end ar and vr are going to essentially merge in some aspect yes. and they are starting to now we're going to see that more and more moving forward i think the emergence of ar and vr which is something that i think needs to happen anyways but yeah yeah but mm -hmm. i mean that's that's pretty much the quick rundown uh we didn't go too far over our uh Not a too lot bad. of time so no it's yeah, worth but, it man uh sorry if we if you did send a super chat and we didn't get to your question or we didn't see your question yeah. in the chat you know we tried to get to as many as we could it, it's hard when we have a guest because i don't want to interrupt them you know when they're on right. when, they're, when tough, they yeah, yeah are, are talking and stuff i want to give I was them just that listening time the whole space. time yeah. like i was, so was chat. The show was the because you can feeling. tell because chat was moving slower as yeah, we were talking to him right, and you know right, when right. chat's moving slower that people are intently listening so it was very cool huge shout out to stan thanks so much for coming on very excited for uh the link stuff and it was it was awesome really awesome to get to talk to him and just hear his passion uh, for what they're doing and the reasons why they're doing it and stuff is awesome. So huge shout out yep. to him. Yep. And so. highly, highly recommend signing up for the Kickstarter. If you're oh, looking yeah. for a headset for next year, this is the headset in my eyes where we sit today to have um, yeah. with everything they're doing with it and how open it is and how it will be working with basically everything. Um, I'm just super excited for yeah. it. Super, yep. super so, excited. Thank you all. Wolf Raza said, good stream, guys. Reckoner said, awesome show. Love the chat with Stan from Lynx. Uh, we really loved it, too. Uh, uh, Brummy Dino said, a lot of people in my family struggle with full VR, so AR would be better for them. And and I could see yeah. I could see that. So, oh, yeah. 
yeah. my wife, I, I can't wait to let her try this headset because that's yeah. her biggest complaint. FPV, FPV cheers. Yeah. Um, is you that, you know, she doesn't want Chris that Edwards, headset, thank Chris. You. Cheers, Sue. Yeah. And uh, doesn't want that, you know, big bulky headset. Well, this is literally just holding lenses in front of your eyes. And when you look through them, you're not seeing this big headset. And it yeah. flips up for ease of doing things. I'm not feeling claustrophobic. I just... There's so many things that check so many boxes yep. that I just, I can't wait, man. Can't I wait. Totally agree. I'm very excited. And yep. people, uh, Pimmy is talk, Pimey, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, talking about a uh, UFC fight. So <laughs> saying, <"Who's the> guy, <laughs> yeah. Corey or TJ right? uh, for go, tonight. Yeah. We've been very much, I've been very, we've actually stayed up. Big me and my wife have stayed up too late the last two weekends yeah. watching UFC fights. It's very hard for me to stay up that late, but man, I love the fight. So, and I, I, I don't know. I don't know who I got. I don't know. Yeah. It's going to be some good fights. I was watching Dave last night. I still haven't got to the Oculus episode yet, so I keep waiting on it. New yeah. season. So good. Highly Oculus recommend it. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. what's what's the show? I don't even I don't watch Dave. it. Dave. Dave. It's on FX. Okay, yeah, Great I gotta show. check that out. So uh Arthur Knox said about <laughs> watching the Assassin's Creed yet, and I haven't found it. I looked for it. I think somebody mm. said it was in mm. Amazon, so I downloaded the Amazon Prime app on my quest headset and We're i couldn't find VR. it so yeah. arthur knox if you're in the discord if you're not in the discord join the discord and drop us a link mm-hmm. because i need to check that out he keeps talking about that so drop me a link of where yeah. that is uh i tried to do it last weekend i'll definitely get in there but i haven't yet <laughs> Brimmy yep. said connor's leg oh i still can't unsee that but uh yeah you say so, next said uh deck gear too yeah well, he's excited, excited about that yeah yeah, I am too. True. I, I am too. I'm, yeah, definitely I, have some more info on that coming up too. Uh, pretty soon, yeah, yeah. we should be getting close yep. to some info. So uh, we we well, we have been in talks with them. So uh, we'll definitely definitely keep you updated on how that goes, and maybe yep. have them on at some point uh, too. Ready? Anakazi said, uh, "Flip Hinge is something to wear out quickly." Their robot in their studio for Links is testing out every yeah. mechanical thing on there, from buttons to adjustments to. Yeah flip ups to do it. They literally have a robot that just sits there and works it nonstop to see how, uh, see how it goes. And Skiva just dropped in. He said morning y'all and Skiva just had a birthday yesterday or the day before. Uh, so happy birthday to Skiva. Love that guy. He's an awesome guy. Awesome guy. And restart the show, man. You'll love Stan. Yeah. Great dude. Yeah. Super For sure. For sure. But again, Thank you to everybody for hopping in, joining us. Uh, thanks for the awesome questions that came up. Yeah, uh, having Stan on, we really appreciate uh, everybody here. Thank you for the the super chats and everything. And make sure you check out the Gleam giveaway links in the description below. There's three of them going on, so make sure you yep. check that out. So please grab them. We're out of here. We got to get going. We'll see you guys back here next week, or see you in VR later. Later, guys. See you. VR in 2016. That was when we first uh, we got the rip. Howdy, howdy. Hey, it worked. It there worked. It is. I love Perfect. That. Hey. Um, we're lucky to be here. I will admit that. My name's Tyler. This is Sean. We're Rendered Reality. And we were definitely up late playing some VR last night. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. It's not always better. Let's <laughs> <laughs> keep it PG, boys. <laughs> I mean, right? We don't know uh, like how much right. sound no, is I coming agree. out of it. <laughs> it's true. Right, right. Is there more sound coming out of it? Uh, we don't know. <laughs>